Now, too much sitting has ruined my body. Too much abuse has gone on for too long. From now on, it'll be 50 push-ups each morning, 50 pull-ups. There'll be no more pills. There will be no more bad food, no more destroyers of my body. From now on, it'll be total organization. Every muscle must be tight. shot down this afternoon as he campaigned in Maryland, not far from Washington. Governor Wallace had just finished speaking and had taken off his coat, was shaking hands, when four or five shots were fired, two of them recorded in this film by ABC News cameraman Charlie Jones. Now I see it clearly. My whole life is pointed in one direction. I see that now. There never has been any choice for me. We meet at a crossroads in history. 
For far too long, the wrong roads have been taken. The wrong roads have led us into war, into poverty, into unemployment, and inflation. Today, I say to you, we have reached the turning point. Nothing that is right and good has ever been easy. We, the people, know that. And we, the people, know the right roads and the good. Today, I say to you, we are the people, you and I, and it is time to let the people rule. Thank you. Dear Jody, don't they make a darling couple? Money is downright sexy. One day, you and I will occupy the White House and the peasants will drool with envy. Until then, please do your best to remain a virgin. You are a virgin, aren't you? Love, John. Come on. Now don't do that. Don't do that. Don't you remember me? You mean, remember when you, you, you got into a taxi? It was a checkered taxi. Wanna make it like this? Listen, I, 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 listen, can't you understand something? But you're the one that came into my cab. You're the one that wanted to get out of here. Well, I must have been stoned. No, I don't want to make it. I want to help you. Dear Jody, there is a definite possibility that I will be killed in my attempt to get Reagan. It is for this very reason that I am writing you this letter now. As you well know by now, I love you very much. Over the past seven months, I've left you dozens of poems, letters and love messages in the faint hope that you could develop an interest in me. Although we talked on the phone a couple of times, I never had the nerve to simply approach you and introduce myself. Besides my shyness, I honestly did not wish to bother you with my constant presence. I know the many messages left at your door and in your mailbox were a nuisance, but I felt that it was the most painless way for me to express my love for you. I feel very good about the fact that you at least know my name and know how I feel about you. And by hanging around your dormitory, I've come to realize that I'm the topic of more than a little conversation, however full of ridicule it may be. At least you know that I'll always love you. Jody, I would abandon this idea of getting Reagan in a second if I could only win your heart and live out the rest of my life with you, whether it be in total obscurity or whatever. I will admit to you that the reason I'm going ahead with this attempt now is because I just cannot wait any longer to impress you. I've got to do something now to make you understand, in no uncertain terms, that I am doing all of this for your sake. By sacrificing my freedom and possibly my life, I hope to change your mind about me. 
This letter is being written only an hour before I leave for the Hilton Hotel. Jody, I'm asking you to please look into your heart and at least give me a chance, with this historical deed, to gain your respect and love. I love you forever. John Hinckley. <laughs> Doesn't make much sense, Henry. He puts you here and then he runs around with a big tongue.
the Insanity Defense Reform Act produced three principal changes to the insanity defense in federal courts. First, the definition of insanity was restricted so that a valid defense only exists where the defendant was unable to appreciate the nature of the wrongfulness of his acts at the time of the offense. The second change produced by the Act resulted in a shifting of the burden of proof from the government to the defendant. Prior to the Act, the government was required to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant was sane at the time of the offence. Under the current Act, the defendant must prove his insanity by clear and convincing evidence. The third change prohibits experts for either the government or defendant from testifying as to the ultimate issue of the accused's sanity.